Hey, how are you doing? I'm slightly frazzled because of that, but yes, okay. <laughs> well done, well done for setting it up. Um, I'm just so excited to see you, Peter. Did you see my interview yesterday with Nathan? I did, yes, very good, well done. Well, well no, I'm just going to try and be a little bit more restrained today. <laughs> okay. It'll be difficult because I'm like so excited to speak to you. We'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> how are you anyway? Yes, not bad, thanks. It's uh, strange times, but... Uh, yeah, managing as best we can. And what have you been doing then to keep yourself busy? Um, trying to keep up with some kind of exercise. Uh, some of the guys from the Go West Band and I have done a little something that we're excited about that we're going to post on social media in the next couple of days. Um, can you tell us? Can you tell us? No. It's oh! <laughs> uh, It's just a little piece of music, but, uh, you know, as we all know, everyone and their brother is doing performances from the living room and that suits some people better than it suits others so we've done something a little bit different oh and tell me about the gym then what you've been doing like fitness wise well i haven't got a home gym uh, so uh, i just took delivery of some resistance bands which i'm yet to try um i just uh, i'm a member of David Lloyd, I don't know if you can say a brand, but uh, when they first closed to customers, they posted some exercise videos and I've just kind of adapted the very first one of those that I looked at. And uh, it's hard, but uh, it gets, it needs to be done, definitely, <laughs> to offset the, uh, the sundowner cocktails. Well, you're looking, you're looking really well. Have you been doing a bit of sunbathing as well? Well, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a little bit of outside space and uh, obviously while the sun is shining, that makes isolation just a tiny bit more bearable. I realise I'm very lucky and not everyone's in that position. But yeah, um, I'm a sun worshipper, for better or worse. So if the sun's shining, I try to be out in it. Now, you had a really big year planned, didn't you? It was your 35th anniversary of Go West. Um, yes. I guess all those dates have been rescheduled, have they? Pretty much all, yeah. I mean, we're still uh, waiting on final developments regarding our joint tour with Paul Young, which was originally scheduled for September this year. But as Nathan said yesterday, I think that uh, it's unlikely now uh, that we're going to see any live shows, certainly for Go West this year. Um, hard to see how social distancing and gig audiences are going to work together. We'll, we'll see what the government... Uh, can do about that, if anything. It would have been nice to have celebrated our 35th anniversary um, this year, but of course there are more important things going on and everyone needs to stay home and stay safe and be sensible and don't read any of the nonsense that people are posting on social media about 5G, for goodness sake, don't get me started. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, more important things going on, much more important that we all look after ourselves, look after one another and keep safe and well. Well, obviously you're separated from Richard at the moment, but I thought if I, if I wore this, I don't know if you can see, I've got a, a little star on my top. Can you see? That That's is enough you... to you. I'll <laughs> let you know. <laughs> no, thank you very much. And um, like, so tell me then, like say, um, if, you, if you were an athlete and you were training all the time, um, if you had a break, it would be detrimental to your physique. Is it the same as singing? Do you have to keep singing or can you just have a break and have, like rest for a year or? Well, I think it depends on the individual really, but, and forgive me if I've told this story before, I'll make it short, but I was on a bill with Leo Sayer a couple of three years ago now. And with all respect, we were on after him and I thought that's going to be fine. And then I watched Leo set from the side of the stage and he was, really outstandingly good and I commented I said to him afterwards you know your voice is sounding great um, because like me he's not 21 uh, and he said sing every day man sing every day that's what you've got to do so I mean singing in front of a loud electric band is a very different experience than singing scales in your living room but still yes I, I try to discipline myself at least to sing some scales and keep those muscles as active as I can. 
Yeah, so a Let's Rock, I thought was absolutely fantastic um, at the Robin. What would you say was your highlight from last year? Well, it's difficult. You know, I always feel a bit awkward about saying this gig was better than that gig. I mean, in the first place, as a singer, um, no two gigs are the same. The environment's never the same. Your voice is never the same. I think as an athlete, you can relate. You, you get yourself in what you think is top shape. And then on the day, things might not necessarily go as well as you might hope. Uh, the Robin is always a fantastic gig because uh, for some reason, the Black Country and the Midlands have been an area of support, oddly. Uh, I can remember never being able to sell 10 tickets on the South Coast, and yet in the Midlands, no problem. I, I never really understood why that should be, but because we've got such a fantastic following and because that venue is so... It's quite a rock and roll venue, you know. It's, it's, um, it's not the... Uh, it's not the most comfortable, perhaps, for the audience, but what is great about the Robin is that the, the atmosphere is always great. It's a small venue, we always sell it out. It's a great crowd, and uh, because we gig there in December often, a lot of people kind of feel it's the beginning of their Christmas celebrations. Yeah. Which, that's a nice association. Having said that, um, having the opportunity to play to eight, 10, 12,000 people as a part of a Let's Rock Festival, or a Rewind, which is bigger still, oh, yeah. is, uh, is, is, you know, it's a, it's a privilege and it's, uh, it's always very exciting and very well organized. And yeah, so those gigs are great too. I, I've often said before, I'm just generally happy to be working. So, uh, <laughs> you know, a gig's a gig, as musicians are fond of saying. I don't understand why, you know, a particular area of a country would be more supportive, say, than, well, that, you know, with the exception of London, because, of course, London concert goers are very spoiled. Anyone who comes to the country plays in London generally, so you could argue that that's a slightly diff more difficult audience to please. You know, they sit there with their arms folded saying, come on then, let's see what you got. I remember, I don't go to many shows myself, but I remember seeing Hall & Oates at the Hammersmith Odeon, uh, maybe a few years ago now, and they came on and played Man Eater, which is a huge hit. That was the first song they played. And the, and the theatre was full and I was looking around and not a single person was standing up. And I just, that surprised me. I thought, well, what have Falling Oaks got to do if they come on and play that song and people kind of sit there politely applauding? But, you know, I guess, you know, now I've alienated every Londoner. <laughs> 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 No, no offence intended. Speaking of songs, what's the, your favourite song to perform? Is it one of your own or...? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I've obviously got a... Um, I think Nick Kershaw was asked, you know, how do you feel about playing these songs still now, all these years later? And his answer was very good. I thought that, you know, the songs have been really good to him and he wrote those songs and I had a hand in writing most of the Go West material, almost all of the Go West material. So... There isn't really any feeling quite like playing a song whose origins you can remember to an audience who sing that chorus back at you. I always think at that point, while I'm having a breather while the crowd is singing, that uh, uh, that's, you know, life is pretty good around about then. So the shorter answer to your question might have been to say, you know, the King of Wishful Thinking, I guess. That's the song that's kept us working really effectively all these years. I don't know if it's the same for everybody. As I say, like you, no doubt, I see all kinds of people doing all kinds of creative things on social media, but I'm not finding it to be the most inspirational time uh, for new songs, what to say in the current circumstances. I don't know. Um, I think everyone's feeling a certain degree of anxiety, but as I say, um, sort of in response to some... Uh, requests, let's say, on social media for the living room performance. I've got together with uh, the band, the Go West Band, some of those guys who've been doing amazing things with other people and covers of songs and presenting uh, that in a, a slightly less um, domestic way than acoustic guitar in living room. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It just doesn't suit me personally as well. I'm not a great uh, a companist, I, you know, I watch uh, Katie Tunstall, for instance, who of course can play at the drop of a hat anywhere you ask her to play. There's something to be said for having had a busking background. 
but that wasn't mine. So uh, as I say, we've done something a little bit different. Did you um, have your white shirt on? Have I? Did you wear your white shirt for this performance? <laughs> no, no, oh. I didn't. <laughs> um, okay, then just so before. The white shirt? Sorry. Is it so essential the white shirt? <laughs> we all like it, Peter. We it's all the, like it. It's the strangest thing. Never really having had a, a definable image, and you know, kind of accidentally by design, sort of thing. It's not, you know, we're never going to be dead or alive or culture club with that very strong um, visual aspect. Um, and I've kind of gravitated to the white shirt largely because it's the best of a series of not very appealing options. Uh, you know, having the uh, the additional bonus that in a big gig scenario like Let's Rock, if you've got a white shirt on, people can see you, which is no bad thing. But the amount of discussion there has been about a simple white shirt is uh, still surprises me. Um, do you have like a whole wardrobe full of them then? Uh, it's trickier than you might imagine to keep um, to keep a white shirt ready for gigs. They get quite uh, worn quite quickly. I'm, I'm not that relaxed a performer. I know you've seen me do my thing. So it's quite, uh, I always say it's quite second row forward. Always makes me, I always look as if I've been playing rugby when I come on stage. Anyway, uh, but yeah, you know, you wash them, they shrink, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and also I seem to have reached a size now where XL doesn't quite do it. So uh, it's actually more difficult than you might think to find a fitted white shirt with a bit of stretch, ideally, uh, for all the obvious reasons. Oh, very good. Um, okay, then, I've got, I want to ask you 10 really quick questions in a moment. But before yeah. before I do that, I wanted to say, um, when all this lockdown's over and it's lifted, what will be the first thing that you really want to do? Yeah, it's. Uh, I saw you ask Nathan this question yesterday. It's quite a modest thing. I, I think a lot of people will relate, but... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate at home. I'm, I'm comparatively comfortable, even given the circumstances. But I do miss a pint of beer at my local gastro pub, which has a great kitchen and brilliant food. And I was thinking about Nathan's answer afterwards. And yeah, I mean, I miss, like a lot of people, I'm sure, being able to go out to a restaurant and uh, have someone cook for me and enjoy a pint of well-kept ale. Missed that. <laughs> Good answer. Okay, I'm going to ask you 10 um, quick questions. Now, because I've interviewed you loads of times before, I've probably asked you some of these before, but um, I just thought it'd be quite fun to do this. Okay. okay. So, um, right. Favourite meal? Um, pasta for my sins. Try to, keep, try to keep the pasta intake down, but I do love pasta. Favourite soft drink? don't really do soft drinks, definitely. You know, I mean, I, I'm not that self-disciplined a person. And I completely agree with Nathan that while you try to keep yourself operational, life is for living and enjoying. And I do like a glass of wine and a plate of pasta, as I've already <laughs> confessed. So one of the things that I've managed to keep out of my world really is fizzy, fizzy drinks. I, I don't really do that. So... I don't know if I've got a good answer. I like um, lime cordial, one part to one part with gin. Does that count? So extravagant. So extravagant. <laughs> <laughs> um, Favourite newspaper? Oh. I, that's a, I'm going to try to restrain myself from reacting there. I don't know if they're... What I would like to have a confident feeling that any newspaper anywhere was giving me accurate, unbiased... Uh, reporting on what's going on in the world. But it seems to me, maybe I'm wrong, that every paper has some kind of bias. Um, I like uh, a couple of the writers who write for The Guardian. If that damns me politically for my views, I don't know. But uh, the short answer is, I don't really believe that much of anything that I see in the news these days. I wish there was one politician or one newspaper that had the public interest genuinely at heart. And I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> um, Favourite time of year? 
Hmm. Uh, summer, summer. Good answer. Good answer. But more sunshine in the summer. Yeah, good answer, good answer. Um, Favourite film or documentary that you've watched recently on Netflix? Like, I know you recommended one to me that I loved. Well, I'm glad you asked me that because I was just watching it before we started. Oh, right. oh sorry. <laughs> the latest episode of the Michael Jordan documentary. Ah. When I lived in California, I um, I really was a basketball geek when I had people with whom to share the basketball. And of course, in the UK, no one cares even the slightest bit about basketball. So when I first came back, I'd be full of enthusiasm and wanted to talk about basketball. And I couldn't, you could see people's eyes glaze over, much as yours are doing right now, probably in the space of a few seconds. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't have thought that it was a truism, but men need to have sport to talk about together but kind of feel that, that you know there is an element of truth in that so obviously coming back to the UK it had to be football but the but the the Michael Jordan documentary is reminding me how passionate I was about the game and also now because the the documentary is about the exact period of time when I was living in America so all this background information that I'm now learning all this context it's fascinating to me because I didn't know what was going on at the time. I watched the games, I knew the names of the players, I loved it as a sport, but now I'm getting the... the did you actually play it, Peter? No. Did, you, did you play it? No. But you're like really tall. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I would be at the very, very smallest end of, um, of basketball players in the modern day, you know. Uh, I don't know, a point guard, which is arguably the smallest position on the field, would be at least as tall as I am, possibly taller. And of course, there are 15 seven-foot players active in the, in the NBA today. I looked it up. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, seven-foot tall, you know. It's, it's, and it's what's also interesting, just going back briefly to the Michael Jordan documentary, is how those skinny kids, they might have been six foot five, six, 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 seven, but they all have to really work in the gym to put weight on because they, I guess their metabolism is such that if they didn't do that, they would be willowy. And of course in the NBA, even though basketball is supposed to be a non-contact sport, so they say, it's a very physical game and you're banging against the other players. So you have to have real upper body strength. You can edit all that bit out later. <laughs> This is going out totally unedited, Peter. Um, no, all that leads me on actually to my next question. What's your um, favourite gym exercise? Mm. Or home gym exercise? Home exercise? I, yeah, I don't look at exercise quite like that, Helen. You know, being a, you know, um, a world-class athlete as you are, you might look at it differently. Was, um, was, I, I was, was careful to choose my words there. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, it's a necessary... It's a, necessary, it's a necessary evil. Press-ups. Um, I like how it feels afterwards, but I never enjoy it really while it's happening. Um, okay, favourite... Um, like I read something the other day, somebody had put a comment on your, on your social media about they hate questions like this and that it was really nice to see an interview without questions like this, so I'm sorry if I'm offending that person. But <laughs> favourite um, animal? Oh, animal. <laughs> I'm not really an animal person. Um, Favourite tune that you play on your guitar? Because I guess some people don't know that you're like really awesome at the guitar as well. Um, so favourite tune that you'd play on your guitar? If I were awesome at guitar, I'd have done my living room performance by now. Oh. Um, I, 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 my guitar playing is, I use it as a tool to write really. So. I couldn't sit here probably and play you anything, you know, that was recognizably the song that you know. I'm usually focused on the chord progression of whatever the thing is I'm working on at any given time. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a great guitar player. I played some of the simple textural parts on the first Go West album because I was working with very sympathetic people who would help me to fix the mistakes and find tricks and ways of not making all those mistakes that beginner guitar players make so i had some i had some help and i really enjoyed it and i'm proud of it when i hear it now but as soon as 
better players came along, I, uh, I made the coffin. For someone who's saying he's not good at guitars, though, how many guitars have you got, Peter? Yeah, well, collecting guitars is <laughs> very different than being, uh, than being a good player. But so, yeah, I've got, I've got a few guitars. I don't know, 30. 30? Something like that. Wow. Um, okay, favourite um, place? Uh, well, home, you know, is, it, I think is arguably everyone's favourite place. But if you're talking about place to visit, over the last three years, I've had two fantastic holidays in Australia prior to the Australian dates we did uh, in those two years. So, yeah, I mean, I've, um, I don't know about you, um, but when you plan your holiday, you always imagine it's going to be a certain way and the sea's going to look great and whatever else it is. And it doesn't always necessarily work out that way. But these last two Australian holidays I've had have been a couple of the best holidays I've had. So I, I you know, I really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, so Sydney is uh, is definitely up there with my favourite places. Fantastic. Now this this last one's from my little Ollie, six year old. Um, I was asking them to come up with some ideas. My children and they um, this is the best Ollie could come up with, but it's probably yeah. better than what I could think of anyway. Um, he just said, "Can you ask him what his favourite sandwich is?" Sandwich. Oh, yeah. that's not a good question. Well, I like. <laughs> but you've never been asked that before. I like, uh, I like Vogel's. Like what? Sorry. Vogel's soy and linseed bread because it's the best bread. And then I like uh, ham with whole grain mustard. Right, lovely. Very specific. Yeah, is that what you had today? I haven't had one today oh. uh, because, again, boringly, bread intake has to be carefully managed. Disciplined feed cocks. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. um, right. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. You know, I love you to bits, Peter. Um, is there anything you want to say to all your fans out there and everything that you know are a bit disappointed, maybe that all the gigs are cancelled or? Well, we'll be back. We'll see you down the road. Um, but in the meantime, please look after yourselves. Stay indoors. Stay safe. Speaking from my personal point of view, until there's a vaccine, I can't see how any of us are going to be safe. So protect the NHS, look after yourself, keep safe. Pete, it's been amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I'll okay. see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.